let's investigate the matrix representation of the swap gate. The swap gate can be expressed as a linear combination of Pauli matrix tensor products. We're going to have the terms denoted by ii, zz, xx, and yy. This is shorthand notation for the tensor product of Pauli matrices. So i, z, x, and y, they are the standard Pauli matrices and identity operator for a single qubit Hilbert space. And by writing two of them next to each other, we're not saying that we're going to multiply them. We are implying that we're going to take the tensor product. So you can imagine an, an implied tensor product symbol between each of these letters. And when we take the tensor product, we take two by two matrices and we combine them into a four by four matrix. So all four of these terms are four by four matrices. And when we take this linear combination and evaluate the sum, we're going to get the matrix representation of the swap gate. The matrix representations in this video will be done in the two qubit computational basis. These two combinations over here are going to give diagonal matrices. And these are going to give anti-diagonal matrices. So they are four by four matrices, but the only non-zero elements of the matrices will lie on the diagonal for these two and on the anti-diagonal for these two. Let's uh, write this in an alternative notation. We can write these as diagonal matrices. So capital D for diagonal. And what we'll see is that we're going to have an identity and another identity appearing along the diagonal. And over here, we're going to see a diagonal matrix. And we're going to have Z and then minus Z. So we're just inserting the identity inside another identity. And we're inserting this Pali Z inside another Pali Z. And we're using the coefficients of the matrix on the left to multiply each of uh, this entire matrix over here. And that's going to produce each of the four quadrants in a four by four matrix. So you can think of a four by four matrix as being composed of four two by two quadrants. And each of those quadrants arise from multiplying one of the elements of this first matrix by the entire second matrix. So that's why we have i i and then we have z minus z. So the coefficients of these i's are just one and one. And the coefficients of these z's are one and minus one. So those are the entries of the identity and the Pauli Z, respectively. Let's have a look at these guys over here. They're not diagonal. They are anti-diagonal. So we'll write a capital A for anti-diagonal. And over here, we're just going to have X and X along the anti-diagonal. But what about this case over here? Here, we're going to have Pauli Y, tensor product with Pauli Y. So we're going to have some imaginary units appearing. So along this anti-diagonal, we're going to have i times Pauli y, and then we're going to have minus i times Pauli y. Now, the convention that I'm using is the anti-diagonal is starting from the bottom left and going to the top right. We could also use a different convention, but my convention is from left to right in this video. For both the diagonals and for the anti-diagonals, we're starting at the leftmost element and then we're moving towards the rightmost element in the matrix representation. So this is the same terms, just written in another type of notation. Now let's write these terms in a more explicit notation. So we're still going to have 1 half. What's going to happen to these first two terms? Well, this first term is going to be 1, 1, 1, 1 along the diagonal. And this term over here is going to be 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. So we can identify Pauli Z here and minus Pauli Z, where the entries are swapped. The signs are swapped over here because we're taking the minus sign. What about these anti-diagonal terms? Well, we have an anti-diagonal term over here. So this X and X are just going to be ones along the anti-diagonal. So we're going to have one, one, and one, and one. So that's four ones over here. And what about this term over here? Well, this is a little more complicated. Inside each of these y's, we're going to have i and minus i. That's starting from the bottom left 
and moving up to the top right. So i times i is going to give us minus 1, and then in the middle we're going to have 1, 1, and then minus 1 again. So on the edges, we have i times i and minus i times minus i. Those both give minus 1. But in the middle, we have either minus i times i or i times minus i. And those are opposite signs, so they're going to give 1. And now we can close the bracket over here. So this is the diagonal portion of uh, this linear combination, and this is the anti-diagonal portion. And we can combine this into a slightly simpler form using the same notation. If we uh, incorporate this one half and distribute it inside, we're going to notice that these diagonal terms are going to turn into 1, 0, 0, 1. Because the middle two terms, they cancel. Here we have plus ones and minus ones. But the edge terms, this one and this one, they're going to add to these ones. And they're going to give 2, 0, 0, 2. But we can divide by this factor of a half, and that gives us 1, 0, 0, 1. What about the anti-diagonal terms? Well, the anti-diagonal terms are going to have the following form. It's the edges that are going to cancel, and the middle ones are going to remain. So we're going to have 0, 1, 1, 0. So it's the opposite of what we have over here. So can you see what is going on here? This one and this one are cancelling. This one and this one are cancelling because they have opposite sign. So these are minus ones, and these guys in the middle are both the same sign. They are all plus ones, so they're going to add to give twos, and we can cancel that two with a one half. So now let's actually write this out in the typical way uh, that we would express a matrix representation. So Let's first have a look at the diagonal entries. So along the diagonal, we're going to have 1, then we're going to have 0, then 0, and then finally 1. And what about the anti-diagonal? I'll do the anti-diagonal in blue, a different color. So we're only going to get 1s over here. We're going to have a 0 down here. Then we're going to have a 1 over here, a 1 over here, and then finally a 0 in the top right. So the convention for this notation is I'm starting at the left, and then I'm moving towards the right. For the diagonal, that starts at the top left and moves towards the bottom right. And for the anti-diagonal, we are starting at the bottom left and moving to the top right. You could also pick the reverse convention. It's just swapping the order of, this, of these terms over here. So as long as you stick to a consistent convention, everything will work out. Now, let's add in all of the remaining zeros. So these, are, these zeros are going to go on terms that are not on the anti-diagonal and they're not on the diagonal. We're going to have zeros here and zeros over here, over here, and over here. So these zeros do not fit into this diagonal or the anti-diagonal. They are the uh, leftover bits of the matrix. And we are neglecting to write those zeros in this notation over here. So the swap gate matrix representation in the two-qubit computational basis can be broken up into a diagonal component and an anti-diagonal component. Let's put some brackets around here, because this is a matrix. I'll write this as the swap gate, which acts on two-qubit states. And another thing that we can actually notice is that we can identify that in the middle over here, we have a Pauli X gate. And over here, we have a 1 by itself and a 1 by itself. So what does this tell us? We can write this in a block diagonal form. So instead of just uh, treating this as a diagonal matrix, we can treat it as a block diagonal form, like this notation over here. So we can write this as the block diagonal matrix with entries 1, x, 1. So it is a 4 by 4 matrix, but we just have three entries over here. This middle entry is a 2 by 2 matrix. So this is a block in the middle, and these ones are on the diagonal. So you can think of this as a block diagonal matrix representation, or you can think of this as a diagonal plus an anti-diagonal matrix representation. Hopefully this video was informative, and it showed you how to take tensor products of the Pauli matrices and the different patterns that emerge when you produce those tensor products and you construct matrix representations of two qubit gates. 
We're going to see two qubit gates, like the swap gate used in quantum circuits in other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. You can find those other videos if you click over here.